Hi everyone! Two weeks ago, I bought two plants off of walmart.com. One of them was this Raphidophora Hayai, and then the other one is my Monster Peru. And in today's video, we're going to be repotting those babies because although the plants came in such great condition, they look great, I'm so happy with them. The soil they came in is not the kind of soil that I want. And I also noticed on the Hayai that there is one of those weird little netting things going on in the root section of the plant and I just want to remove that completely. Then we're going to have the plants continue growing happily in some really good soil that I know how often to water and that I find to be just more beneficial for the plant. So we're going to be starting off with my Raphidophora um, hi, I, I have in this little pot some cocoa core and some cocoa core chunks, but I am going to be adding more ingredients. Everything I'm adding, I'm going to be eyeballing. This is all just based off of intuition for how I want the soil to look. Um, but I am going to be adding vermiculite, worm casting, orchid bark. This is medium sized orchid bark, some charcoal. And lastly, some pumice. <laughs> so as I mentioned, I have both my Monstera Peru and my Raphidophora. I've had them both for around two weeks and I had not watered them since I got them, which is a really long time to not water them. Um, when I got them, the soil on both of them was damp. On the Raph, it was more wet than the Monstera. In order to prevent root rot, I kept both of my plants outside and it was kind of hot some days. So the soil was able to dry out and it was dried out fully. I watered them both today and normally I wouldn't repot a plant the same day that I watered it. I would wait the next day or best case scenario, I would water it like I would repot it like two or three days after re um, watering, but I kind of just want to get it done. And so if you're repotting your plants, I would wait like two to three days after watering. And that's the most ideal time to repot because your plant is hydrated. It's looking good. It's probably happy and you're not going to have to deal with super wet soil like I'm going to have to be dealing with today and the plant really didn't have that much time to absorb all of the water so it is still a little bit dehydrated so it's not in the healthiest state to be you know for me to be messing with the roots and everything um, so i am gonna have to be extremely cautious and gentle so i'm gonna add some more pumice and now we can get into the repot so what I noticed of this soil is it's very uh, kind of dense. It's very absorbent of water. And what I'm looking for is not to be super absorbent. It takes kind of a while for it to dry out. So it stays damp for a pretty long time. And I wanted to just dry out more quickly to prevent any root rot from happening. And I'm gonna have to try and be very gentle. Like I mentioned, the plant isn't in its best state. And not to mention that I'm going to have to try and keep it on this stick. Oop. For the soil, you can definitely see how clumpy and just not very aerated it is. And I'm looking to change that. So right now what I want to do is find the roots because they're, they're here, they're looking healthy. They're very small though, and I wanna be as gentle as possible. Um, some of them are actually rotted, so it's a good thing that I waited, let the soil dry out. So again, I'm trying to be as gentle as possible. Okay, one piece came off in a big clump. Okay, so I removed the soil. I removed as much um, dirt as possible that I feel comfortable with removing by hand. And I think I'm just gonna rinse the rest of the roots off and it's not really looking good in my opinion, but I think I can heal it and it can end up being okay. But this soil is 
not what I'm looking for. So it really did need to be repotted. This one's gonna be much better, much healthier for the plant. I'm gonna rinse this off and be right back. Okay, so I've rinsed off the roots. They do look better than I thought now that I can see what color they are. Um, I tried to get rid of as much of, you know, the netting as possible, but I would rather leave it on than risk damaging the roots anymore. So hopefully one day when the root ball is stronger, then I can remove it, but I think it'll just disintegrate by then. Um, so as you can see, this isn't really like the healthiest and largest root system. And that's usually something you have to worry about when you buy plants from big box stores. So just be aware of that. You have to be very ginger with the little roots and hopefully it can grow stronger. It could be a much larger root system to support this plant. And now we can finally get to repotting, which is the easiest part. And the most worried I was was to see the roots, how they actually look. Um, also, I did mention it, but this whole entire root chunk came off of one of the sides. So that is actually very tragic. So the good thing about the this Raphidophora is that it needs to be centered. So I don't need to try to put it like up against one side of the pot. It's gonna be centered since there is a plant on each side of the stake. So I have this guy repotted. Honestly, it looks so much better. I'm so freaking happy about it. When repotting this plant, I think the things to watch out for is when you're taking it out from its old pot, you have to be very careful because since the plant is attached to a wooden stake and there's not many roots connected to that, if you kind of like pull it out haphazardly, it's very easy to rip the roots off the plant because it's not, they're not attached very, they're not attached in a way that can withstand that kind of force. So that is what, something that you need to be careful about. And then potting it is super easy. When I'm using a really chunky mix, what I like to do is put in the chunkiest parts of the mix first. So I'll try to gather all the big chunks of bark and then the cocoa chips and put those in first. And then what I'll do is I'll just scoop in the rest of, you know, kind of like the pumice, you know, whatever else is left so that I can fill in the gaps that the chunk kind of left. It's kind of like if you're putting, you know, like that analogy where you have balls, like larger balls that you're putting into a, into a cup and then you're also putting sand into a cup. If you put the larger balls in first and you put the sand in, then it's all gonna fill out around it. But if you put in the sand first, then the balls are just gonna stay on top. And that's what's gonna happen if, if you just kind of put it in there together. Um, usually the chunky parts will rise to the top and then all the like sandier parts are gonna sink to the bottom. So that's what I like to do to try and help prevent that. And this is how he's looking. I'm gonna have to tie it up better because it's not tied up very well right now. But first, what I'm gonna do is just let it chillax over here and we're gonna get started on the Monstera Peru. And I'm gonna be using the same mix for that. I'm probably gonna add need to add in some chunky parts for that as well. But I'm very glad to get rid of this old mix because look at it, it's very, um, it's just not a good mix. So <laughs> that's why I'm doing this. I like to leave my plants in their nursery pots for as long as possible. And I would do that as well, but for these plants, I'm very worried about their well being. So you can keep them in the pots they come in, you can keep them in the old soil they come in. Um, but if you think you're gonna have a difficult time taking care of them in that soil mix, then definitely move them over. Cause some plants, I leave in their nursery pot for literally years before I repot them. So this one I did want to get done though. So I'm going to get the Peru and we're going to start working on that. 
Okay, here is the Peru. I also just watered it earlier today. Um, I bottom watered both of them. So they've been soaking up the water for like 30 minutes and they were watered, they were watered like a couple of hours ago. Um, and I wanted to put the Peru in this pot because I feel like it would look very pretty. But I'm very worried that this pot is too big because as I mentioned earlier, the root systems are not very big. So we'll see how the roots are looking. I'm actually super curious to see how the roots look on this guy, how healthy they look. And I'm just using the same one, dumping it in here. Okay, so this guy has a very nice root system. And this is just showing you the different possibilities you can get. This is a very nice, well-established plant. I'm so happy with this. I wanna try to keep the plant in its shape like this, instead of completely, you know, like moving it around. If that makes sense, I wanna keep it in this shape, like how it is. So I'm not gonna try super hard to remove the plant from this soil. Okay, so I have rinsed off the roots. Everything is still together intact. Look at this, how many roots there are. And when I was in potting, I did find this, which is, it looks like it, it's, it just has tiny, tiny roots on it. So I'm gonna put this in its own little baby separate pot and you can tell the leaf doesn't look that healthy. This is like a tiny, tiny root. It either had more roots and they broke off or it just was living with this tiny little root. And this is also another thing you need to look out for is that they put separate like plugs into the plants and some plugs can root really well, some, plant, some plugs don't. So that's also something to look out for. And we're gonna take care of this baby separately. But for now, I feel like this pot is too big for this plant. And I think what I'm gonna do is put it in this pot and then just boop, use it as a cash pill for now. And then when the plant gets bigger, then I'll transfer it over to this pot. So just to be on the safe side, cause I also really don't wanna lose this plant either. Both of these plants I love a lot and they're pretty expensive. So I wanna take care of them and not let them die. Uh, so I'm just going to be using this little six inch pot instead. I've repotted this big guy and now I'm going to put this little guy into this pot, which actually looks so huge for it. Sorry guys, my camera died, but what I ended up re what I ended up doing was potting up that little piece into this pot that I thought was too big, but I think it's actually an okay size. So it's in here and I have completed my beautiful Monstera repotting. It looks so freaking good. I'm so excited about that. And I also have my little raft here that also looks so freaking good. So overall, I'm really pleased with how this repotting all went. The roots on this guy were amazing. The roots on this one were not as good, but they are alive and well, which is all that I could ask for. So these plants are well on their way to becoming really huge and luscious, hopefully. Well, I guess not luscious for this one, but we'll see. Um, both of these plants, I actually think I'm gonna be keeping um, by an east facing window. And then this one I'm gonna put into my cabinet behind me so that it could have that humidity to help it root. Um, if I don't end up putting it into my cabinet, I'm gonna put a cloche over it. And honestly, humidity is everything. If you give a plant humidity, it's gonna grow crazy, um, whether it's healthy or not. So, well, it depends on how unhealthy it is. But in my experience, plants have been revived from the dead just by adding a cloche over it or putting it in a little plastic baggie. So that's what I'm gonna do to help this guy survive. And that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I definitely am feeling so much better now that I have both of my plants repotted nicely. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.
Bye.